What's up, Everyday Bladeologist? Okay, so new knife company and new knife today. To me, of course. Um, this is just what it says. This is an American-made blade. Um, we always stand up and take notice when we hear that. Um, this is an American knife company making knives in America. Absolutely worth our attention, right? So... I saw this knife and let me open it and let you look at it this is the model one I saw this knife and when you look at it to me the first thing I thought was Grimsmo Rask and and that's okay I'm not saying they copied it it's a little bit different or whatever but it's it's that shape so it kind of put me in the mindset of oh man a Grimsmo Rask for 300 bucks yeah bring it on uh, a lot of people will want that because that's a hugely popular knife well it's not a Grimsmo Rask. Uh, definitely not a bad knife by any means. It's just not that. I mean, a, a Grimsmo Rask is a work of art. It's as much attention to the interiors of the knife visually as there are to the exterior of the knife. This is a this is a user knife. This is a knife you buy and use. The I have a few uh, minor issues with the knife. I have some uh, f a few positive things to say about the knife. It, it's it's not over the top the best knife i've ever held and, and and it's not um it's not a piece of junk either by any means so a couple of things that got my attention that i liked was the milling on the scales i thought that was super super nice non-free spinning pivot see they're listening to some of our things right they're listening to some of this stuff in these reviews and they're they're translating it Log bar over travel stop. I think that's pretty much standard now, right? Really nice clip with decent spring in it. Nice backspacer. The machining is done uh, pretty well. Pretty well on this knife. When you take it apart, that's where you start to see the differences in the rask and this knife. Um, this knife is rough machined on the inside. There's lots of tooling marks, but that's okay. It's the interior of the knife. One thing that did kind of creep to the exterior of the knife was this is pretty sharp right here, all the way down. And, you know, $300 is not the top of the mark, but for $300, I think you ought not have that. I think you, that, ought, that, should have, that could have easily been taken care of during, during deburring. And maybe it's just this knife. I don't know. But uh, it's just a little bit rough. And the, the biggest thing for this knife was the flipper. It's, it's a flipper. It's its only deployment method. And you have to really put some finger into this thing to flip it. Now, it's not near as bad as it was. You don't have to. It, I can do it almost 100% of the time now. But when I got it out of the box, uh, five, first five times, I failed four times. It, it just wasn't tuned properly. The pivot tightness wasn't right. The lock bar pressure wasn't right. Um, I cleaned the whole inside of it. Greased it. I mean, I oiled it, not greased it. Used some lightweight oil. Oil the detent track, relieve the lock bar pressure, and I got it pretty good. I mean, it'll 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 open 99% of the time now. But it just seems like from the flippers I've had, now it's not fair because I'm used to flipping Shirogorovs all the time. But I, I'm not saying it has to be as smooth as a Shirogorov, but it absolutely should fire 100% of the time. When you're open, when you when you build a flipper and it's a dedicated flipper, it should open 100% of the time. Uh, this one's 99.8, so I'm not going to knock it. I just wanted to point that out. There's a lot of guys that will buy this knife and not know how to tune a knife. They don't They don't take their knives apart, right? I take my knives apart as soon as I get them. I inspect them, tune them, and get them just like I want them. There's a lot of guys out there in this hobby, newer guys, that, that have no idea how to do that. So when you sell a knife, it needs to be tuned right. So especially for $300, they've, they've paid enough that it should... It should work gangbusters out the gate. So we're S35VN steel, perfectly good to go. Titanium scales, titanium pocket clip, all good to go. Um, one thing that was different is the hardware is T7. The body hardware is T7. Not, nothing wrong with that, I just haven't seen that. Uh, it's usually T6 or T8 or T10. Uh, that was just something that was different. So it feels really good in hand because it has the ergos of the 
uh, Grimm's Morass, right? It's a great, great blade shape. The pocket clip tucks in where it's supposed to, and it, it feels really good. This, to be fair, doesn't grab you in standard use, but just the fact that it's, I mean, it's, it's sharp right there. I mean, it, now all you got to do is take a light file and go down it and knock it down, but uh, $300, I don't think you ought to have to do that. No, maybe I got a bad one, but that's not my fault. And it's not a bad one. I've said that wrong. Maybe I got one that just wasn't put together great. Uh, it works great now, now that I tuned it. Um, but that's not my fault because I contacted the company and asked for a review sample and they didn't even return my call. So, um, not a big deal. I mean, that, that happens a lot. A lot of companies don't, but I wanted to get a, a, a true sample of their work. So, you know, I purchased this one and that's, that's what I got. It just, it, it, see that one right there didn't fire. It, it fires, like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, but you gotta, you gotta give it some finger. Let's check some dimensions. <laughs> so we're about three and three eighths on the blade. About four and three eighths on the scales. About eight inches overall. <clears throat> Wait. Three point eight. Not bad. Not bad. Overall, <clears throat> um, probably considering the price and everything, probably seven point five out of ten. Um, what I recommend this knife, to somebody. If they had three hundred dollars, you're not going wrong with this knife. You're not. Um. It's probably a little unfair, uh, maybe because of the caliber of knives I handle, but I still think, you know, a flipper should flip right out of the box. I don't think it should be failing right out of the box. That's something that should be tested in, in, uh, in, um, in the company before it's let out. And also, this, this should be done in deburring. This should be knocked down. But other than that, the knife is a solid knife. It's a single row bearing system. Um, it works fine. It works fine. It just seems like on the flipper, for some reason, it just doesn't have the 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 gusto that a lot of the flippers have. It works just fine now, but before, man, I, I, I failed more times than it opened, but I believe I got her tuned up good and she's good to go now. They did do one thing I always preach about and put the lock bar cut on the inside. I really appreciate that. That sure makes that uh, back scale look a lot nicer. And makes it easier in and out of the pocket. So I, I really appreciate that. So anyway, that is the American Blade Works Model 1. Uh, the titanium version. Milled titanium version. An S35VN. Guys, God bless you and your families. Say a prayer for our country. Good night.